Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough. And I'm Alexis Thompson. And we're here together with a slight change of format from our cookery sketches. We're going on this occasion to do a shopping expedition. Now, Alexis, this is your idea. You wanted to show me why we come to places like this to shop rather than... Yes, I think it's really important that as well as cooking, you do the buying of the ingredients and we talk about what's good and where to get it from. Yeah. And that's why we come to places like this. Well, I'm very much looking forward to this. I mean, I've, I've been wandering around it just before we started filming and it does look wonderful and uh, I'm yeah. going to be in, enjoy showing it off. Don't forget, press the subscribe button and we'll keep you updated on all the things we do. Come along, Alexis. Let's go and have a look. Let's do it. Situated on the A419, just east of Stroud, the Jolly Nice Farm Shop was set up in 2013 on the site of an old roadside garage by Rebecca and Simon Wilson. Farmers with extremely strong local connections, they had an idea to reduce the gap between grower and consumer. They now employ around 50 people, and the shop is a roaring success. Well, Alexis, first of all, t I mean, tell me why it's a good idea to come and shop in a place like this rather than the, the, a normal supermarket, which is after what I always do. Because I would say 99% of what is on sale here is local, locally yeah. grown, locally produced, and you've got that traceability. The people selling it will know all about it. Yeah. There'll be provenance that they can tell you, particularly with the fresh meat. They will know exactly where it's come from. And because it hasn't travelled very far, it's all going to be at the zenith of its freshness. It's going to be seasonal as well, because it will very much reflect what is local and what is fresh now so it's the, it's the best of everything and it's great to be able to support local farmers local producers yes well it does seem that this um, particular place is, an, is really is an offshoot of a local farm I mm. mean they were they were farmers I think they still are and they, they grow their own meat and stuff mm. and this is obviously a kind of added value farmers always do have trouble making a living these days yes and quite often farmers markets are a way that they supplement their income and if they're able to support a shop like this or indeed it's an offshoot of what they do that also is a very good way to, to up the income it makes it makes it work and we have to support the British farming community because it's very tough times for everybody yeah so being able yeah. to come somewhere like this and really buy local is a great thing to do okay well I think we should better go and start buying local let's I think have we a should. quick look let's at the butchers first and um, I'll uh, now tell me a little bit about um, what you would look for here I come to I mean oh, first of all the amazing colors it's still well it's one of the first things you notice is how vibrant everything looks and that's partly because it's not all swathed in plastic um, I mean actually the chickens are a very good place to start first of all free range hurrah so the animals yeah. have had a decent life um, but also when you look at those chickens you can see immediately they're not slimy yeah. whereas when you buy a chicken in a supermarket because it's been swathed in plastic and I suspect it's had a little bit of augmentation shall we say as well yes. it's very it's very <laughs> slippy and slimy when you get yeah. it out whereas these are beautifully dry but yeah. the other thing is how vibrant all the colors are um, I mean the thing I noticed in particular if we look at this uh, Robin that look at this beautiful spring lamb so again it's seasonal Peter we're going to talk to Peter in a minute he's going to tell us where that's come from yeah. but look how rich the color is on the lamb yeah. it almost looks like beef yes. it's extraordinary whereas if you look at lamb in a supermarket again it'll be under some plastic usually yes. uh, but also it has a very slightly gray look to it I know but that gray look you know that well. gray look Absolutely. whereas here yeah. everything is beautifully it's really in the pink. I want to say everything's very pink? much in the pink. Okay. Um, so yeah, very vibrant, is very really fresh. Where that phrase comes from? No, oh, I don't okay. think it is. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> know where it does be. come it's from. Uh, we'll look okay. it up. <laughs> All right. 
Well, I think we, we need to buy simple today because, um, after all, we're, you're trying to teach me how to cook it, so uh, uh, and I, to, to keep to the simple things. What would you lean towards? Well, we have, I mean, this is such a beautiful array of meat, and there are many things that you, that you could buy and that I could teach you to cook, but I want to buy something where there's a little bit of work involved. We could buy one of these beautiful ribeye steaks because it's 28-day matured and it looks fabulous. There's that lovely bit of fat running around it. Yeah. But I am very drawn to the local grass-fed minced beef. I hope Peter's got some more, actually, because somebody just bought a big wad of it because it looks very good. <laughs> Again, it's got that beautiful colour. I'm going to ask yeah. Peter how much fat content there is as well because it's sometimes a mistake to go for the leanest of minced beef because actually the fat is what gives it some flavour. Really, so you yeah. don't want to be completely without fat. Okay. Um, but that means that I can teach you to make a basic... I'm going to say bolognese sauce. Now, our, all our Italian friends are going to go oh, and yeah. be horrified because it's not what the Italians call it, a bolognese. But we're going to do that because it can be turned into so many other things. Right. That basic minced beef based sauce can become a lasagna, it can become a chili, you can use it for a cottage pie. Right. So it's a really good thing for a beginner to learn to make because it lends itself to so many other dishes. I'm really excellent. Does well that, that sound sounds good? that sounds like a very, very good okay. idea. Very good. Well I mean yes, let's just ask Peter a let's bit about the Peter, yes. about the um, the provenance. Peter, can we interrupt you a second? Yes. If you don't mind just coming around and Alexis will ask you knowledgeable questions about your amazing meat. Well, I mean, we're struck by how beautiful it looks, Peter, and also okay. by what you have written up on the, on the blackboard, yeah. which is all our meat is free range, hurrah, um, and that you know where it's come from. Yes. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about, let, let's start with this lovely local grass-fed minced beef, which I think we're going to buy. So yeah. is that something you guys are farming or is it one of your local producers? No, that's, that's our own beef. So our farm's in Western Burt, um, so the owner of this business, she does the farming with her husband. Um, then they really animals, they're, you know, 100% free range, pasture fed, and then we, we get all the, all the produce from it. Yeah, so yeah, once it comes into us, we get it slaughtered locally, comes in, we then hang it for 28 days and cut it up and put it out. Looks, yeah, and it looks really beautiful. And the lovely thing about that is the animals are local, they haven't gone through great long travelling, it's local and then it stays local. Yeah, and that's right. that's important for the quality of the meat as oh, well. Oh, definitely, yeah, especially sort of pork. Pork, you find, is sort of, when it gets stressed, they turn quite fatty and the meat yeah. turns quite tough. So. Yes, because yeah, it can seize up a little bit, can't it, and get yeah, tough. So very important to animals had a good relaxed. life and, and, and been dealt with well and humanely. It makes a real difference to the food, actually, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? And the other thing we were saying earlier on is it's not all swathed in plastic no. because I'm on, a, I'm on a, a real sort of rallying call about trying right. to reduce the amount of plastic that, that we use in the cookery school. Yes. And it's lovely to come somewhere like this because this is all open. I know we're going to put it in a bag, but we've brought our own reusable bag to take it home in. So again, it just cuts down on that waste, yeah, doesn't definitely. it? Yeah. Oh yeah. All the animals, you know, every, everything we have is hung, doesn't come in, any plastic, nothing like that. You know, it all just comes in as it is, whole carcass, and we do all the work. That's great. Yeah. Really good. What sort of fat content do you think your uh, your minced beef's got, Peter? Russell? I would say I I personally like my meat lean. Yeah. So you tend a lot of butchers if they like fat they put more fat in. So yeah. I'd probably say we work on sort of 80-20. Okay. So 80% beef and 20% fat. But that's perfect yeah. because I was just saying to Robin it needs a little bit of fat for the flavour. Yeah. Um, so that that's me actually is the ideal so ratio. Perfect, so perfect ratio. really good, really yeah. good. So, yeah. Well, I think we can make a decision, actually, Alexis, that that's what we're going to buy. I've so already made that decision. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's that. great. So could we have uh, 300 grams of that minced beef, yeah, please, Peter? So that would be great. We've Thank you. Like Brilliant stuff. Okay, Doug. I'm going to leave you to pack that up, actually, and then we'll, we'll be back in a minute or two. We're going to have a look at some of your vegetables. Okay. Nice okay. to talk to you, Peter. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, here we are in front of an amazing display of wonderful fresh vegetables. Mm, beautiful, um, isn't they it? They do look wonderful. Again, if you think it's so beautifully presented. And yet, what they aren't is sort of uniform in shape and size. Which is no, right. which I approve of because there's a, such an amount of waste because we say, oh, I don't like the look of that. Or the food, food producers decide that we won't like the look of that. Yeah. But here you can see, you know, we've got knobbly and bobbly and just as delicious. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to need for our sauce is we're going to need the Holy Trinity as a base which is 
carrot, celery, onions, right. which make the most wonderful base for any sauce dish. So I've got my lovely clove of, oh, that's really beautiful, fresh garlic. Got a couple of onions in there already. Going to yeah. need some carrots. I'll just get a few of the loose carrots because these are going to be chopped up. Well, you are going to be chopping them up really small, so right, it doesn't okay. matter what they look like because you're not going to care by the time they're chopped up. No, of uh, there's celery over there, which we'll grab. I'm, I'm, I'm playing a bit fast and loose with this, so I might go for a pepper as well. So we might get a lovely big red pepper. Look at that beauty. Right. The colours are so attractive, aren't they? They aren't they um, just. And have you seen these lovely heritage tomatoes, Robin? Look at these. Look at the colour of this and the shape of this. You see, it is beautiful, if it, it wasn't yeah. for producers like the guys here and their suppliers we wouldn't still have stuff like this because no. people wouldn't be bothering with growing it but that's a beauty so i'm gonna have that as well we'll have a couple of those um and lovely mushrooms which i dare say have come in from these chestnut mushrooms look nice don't they, they so do they'll have come nice. in from a producer somewhere right. locally so we might have a few of those um, right, okay. No, we don't. See, see I'm going to say You're no. Just, I'm going to okay. say no to the plastic, say bag, no to the plastic bag. And I'm going to say let's put them all in here, loose, because they're all going to be um, in my reusable bag afterwards. We don't need the plastic. Say no right, to the plastic. Okay. There we are. <laughs> all good. Excellent. Okay, well, that, and that looks pretty good. We'll pick up yeah, the celery on the way through. Pick up the celery on the way through. Excellent. Okay, okay. Right. We're good. Right, Alexis, we're going to, we're going to, we now know what we're going to be cooking, exactly. and uh, so, yes. it has an Italian slant, it e does. even if it's not necessarily a traditional bolognese so, um, sauce. Um, so I think we ought to have some Italian wine. Well, it's so let, let, we'll, we'll have a look. This is my, yeah. <laughs> this is my department. Um, it's interesting. We, they have an interesting selection. It's not enormous, but in a place like this, you wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, but it, they do have some good Italian examples. There's a, mm. there's a, there's a lovely Chianti there, which I mm. think is rather nice. But I'm, I have my eye on this Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. Oh. This is um, rather wonderful. The Montepulciano is a, is a name of a place, but it's also the name of a grape variety. Right. And this is made in Abruzzo, which is on the eastern side of Italy, uh, just south of the Marche, um, and using the Montepulciano grape. And I'm very fond of it, so I suspect this will be delicious. So as so long as you're happy with it, I describe thought. this flavour to me, Robin. Well, it has, we it'll have a kind of richness of uh, and warmth to it because mm -hmm. it comes from quite far south. Um, it'll have a soft fruit to it, which is very oh, nice. Oh, lovely! And yeah. it also has a rather wonderful little kind of metallic finish, which is the, a lot of Italian wines do. The Italians very much like to have a slightly bitter metallic finish to the end of their wine. And this will, I'm sure, have all those characteristics. So that will complement Peter's beautiful and minced it'll go beef. Extremely perfectly well won't it? With minced beef, yeah, lovely. Um, so I'm encouraged by that. We will have that bottle, and then I think we better go home and cook it. Let's do it. All okay. Right. <laughs> well, Alexis, it's been great fun. I, I have to admit, it's something of an eye opener for me. It's it's uh, an extraordinary place. I'd heard about this place from my family, strangely enough, who uh, shop here quite often, but the quality of stuff is amazing. Yeah, you know? and it's like I always say, good cooking starts with really good ingredients, and we've certainly got that, so yeah. we can go back and get on with the good cooking now. Well, we will do that, and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you updated with all the things we do. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and of course our website is thecotsoldexplorer.co.uk. We'll see you next week.